Hi guys, welcome back. This is Professor Hank. In this video, I'm going to go over the uh, AC3 algorithm with you. And this is a popular algorithm in um, artificial intelligence, and it's for figuring out whether or not a particular graph is um, arc consistent. Okay, so what does arc consistent mean? It means that um, a constraint can be satisfied or all constraints can be satisfied between different nodes uh, on the graph, okay? So if that's the case, if a graph is consistent, meaning that every single constraint can be satisfied, that means that there is going to be a solution to the constraint satisfaction problem, right? So this can be used as a pre-processing step uh, to determine whether or not you should then subsequently run an algorithm that will find an actual solution uh, for you. So depending on how complex the um, constraint satisfaction problem can be, this can be a useful thing to you know, find out that there's no solution uh, quicker and more efficiently. So what I have on the screen for you right now is um, the algorithm from our textbook that uh, walks you through, right? So basically what this thing does is it's gonna take a constraint satisfaction problem and it's going to return false if there's an inconsistency found. And if there's an inconsistency, that means that there's some constraint that can't be satisfied. And if there's no constraint that can be satisfied, that means there's no solution, right? Or if there is a constraint that can't be satisfied, then there's no solution. If there's no solution, then you know then you can't you don't have a solution for your for your CSP. Right? So otherwise it'll return true. Notice it's not going to give you a solution to it. It's just checking to see if there actually is a solution. Okay, so rather than going through this particular pseudocode line by line, what I want to do is I want to show you a revised, maybe easier to follow um, algorithm that I, re I rewrote this basically to be a little bit more digestible. Um, but essentially what this revolves around is going through in checking every single um, constraint, right? And uh, every time you have a constraint that is violated, then you modify the domain of the um, two variables that are, or the two nodes that are, that are part of the constraint, right? So you modify that to make it so that way the constraint can be uh, satisfied. All right, so, and, and really it's not both variables, I misspoke there, it's, it's, it's one of the variables. So that way you can satisfy the constraint. Okay, so let me show you um, this revised algorithm and then we'll do an example, okay? So here's the revised algorithm, right? So basically what this says is that you take all arcs, okay? And so the arcs represent constraints, okay? Hey, we're going to do an example of um, map coloring, but it, it holds for any constraint satisfaction problem, right? And so one constraint or the constraint is, is that no adjacent regions of the map can have the same color. Okay, so that's a constraint. Okay, and so you add up or you add every single one of those constraints to a set. Right? And our textbook says to a Q, and they explain why that's kind of a, a silly name for it. But it's a set. It doesn't have to be ordered in any way. Okay? Um, and you have to go in both directions. You have to consider both directions. You have to consider the constraint from um, X to Y, as well as from Y to X. Okay? So both directions. Now, while that set isn't empty, you pick one of those um, arcs, okay? and you remove it from the set. That's what I'm saying. That's why I was saying that there's no um, requirement that it be in any kind of order. You just got to grab one of them. That's why I, I call it a set instead of a queue. All right. So you remove one, and if you need to change the domain of X, so it's an arc between X and Y. So say between two regions, two separate regions on a map, between region A and region B, or region X and region Y. So if you need to change the domain of region X, then you check to see if the size of the change domain of X is zero. If it is, you're done. That means there isn't a value that you can assign to X that will make the arc between X and Y consistent. Okay, and if it's not consistent, then there's no, you can't satisfy the constraint between X and Y and therefore there is no solution. Um, and therefore, you know, we're done. You know, the, 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 the graph isn't arc consistent and therefore there isn't gonna be any kind of solution for this constraint satisfaction problem, okay? But if we get past that, 
right? If you get past that, if the size of the domain of, of, of the x variable or the x node is not zero, then continue on, right? So then what you do is you check um, every neighbor of x, right, except y, okay? And then you are gonna go ahead and add the arc between the neighbor and x to the set, okay? So you're going in the other direction, okay? So you already checked, you already checked, um, you already checked one direction, so now you wanna go back in the other direction and you'll see this um, play out when I do the example. Okay, now if you get through that entire while loop there, that means that you've gone through every single arc, right? Every single constraint, okay? And an arc is gonna represent a constraint. You've gone through every single constraint and made sure that there is uh, a valuable, uh, or a, 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 an actual um, solution. Right? There is a way for you to satisfy that constraint. Right? There are values from the domains that you can satisfy to both x or that you can assign to both x and y that are going to satisfy that constraint. Okay? So what that'll mean is that the constraint satisfaction problem is arc consistent and there is a solution. Okay, so now what's it mean to actually revise the domain of x? Well what you do is you check each value in the domain, we'll call it v of x. Okay, in the domain of x against the constraint between x and y. Okay, now if there's a value, call it v of y in y's domain, that can't be found to satisfy the constraint, then we're going to remove that value v of x from x's domain. Okay, now if that is true, right, if that v of x has been removed, then return true or otherwise return false. So all this is saying is, look, if you had to remove a value from the domain of x to be able to satisfy the constraint, then you did a revision. Okay, so return true. Okay, and that right here, if we go back up to, um, if we need x to, ch to change the domain of, of x, right? So this is just returning true. This is how we test it, is by going down here and checking what it means to revise. Okay, so let's let's take a look at an example, right? So we'll look at an example of, um, of Australia. Okay, so this is a map from, from um, the textbook, right? So you got Australia, and there are these, what, uh, eight different, seven different regions of the map, right? And so we have to color the map in such a way is that no adjacent regions have the same color, okay? And um, we, can, we can reframe or redraw this or redefine it as a or re represent it as a constraint satisfaction graph and that's what's on the right hand side here so how do you read this well western australia right that's w a okay who's adjacent to western australia northern territory and, and uh, uh south australia right so nt and sa but nt and sa are both next to each other northern territory and south australia are both next to each other so we put an arc in between so each node represents one of the regions on the map and then um each line between those nodes represents the fact that they're adjacent and these are going to represent constraints right because remember what our constraint is our constraint is is that no adjacent regions can have the same uh, color okay so um, let's go and bust out my whiteboard or my blackboard in this case and uh, we'll, we'll work through this problem okay so I have on my board here um, the map of Australia, the constraint satisfaction graph. I've got the original um, algorithm from the text, and I've also got my revised algorithm, which I'm hoping will be a little bit easier to follow, right? So let us define the parameters for this constraint satisfaction problem, okay? So our constraint satisfaction problem. So what we have is we've got, um, we're gonna have to define the variables, okay? We're gonna have to do define the domain and we're gonna have to define the uh, constraint, right? So the variables, the domains, and the constraints. Okay, so what are the variables here? Okay, the variables are um, all of the uh, notes, right? So you look at the different regions and we've got what? Western Australia. We've got uh, the Northern Territories. We've got uh, Queensland. We've got South Australia. We've got uh, New South Wales. OK, 
Okay, we've got Victoria and we've got Tasmania. So what's the domain in this problem? The domain is um, all the values that can be assigned to the different variables. So what are those? Well, um, for in the text, you know, what they give us is they say that, well, you can color each region red, green, or blue, right? So we can either assign to WAR for red, G for green, or B for blue. Now, what are the constraints? The constraints are that all of the different variables will be different, right? Um, they'll be different in that, let me rephrase that. They're gonna be different in that they can't be the same if they're adjacent, right? So all diff isn't the best constraint there instead saying WA does not equal NT, right? Um, WA does not equal SA, right? NT does not equal SA, uh, and so forth, right? So um, all adjacent regions must be different. They must be different, right? So those are our constraints, okay? So with that in mind, we want to know if there's going to be a solution to this um, constraint satisfaction problem, to this map coloring problem. And so to figure that out, we're going to um, follow our algorithm here, right? All we want to know is, is there a uh, solution? Okay, is there a solution? In another video, I'll show you how to actually find the solution. All right, but so what are our constraints? Well, there's a constraint between W and NT, or WA and NT, right? And what's that constraint? They can't be the same, right? The values can't be the same on any of these constraints. Okay, they all have to be different. Okay, they all have to be different. So let's go ahead and look at our algorithm here. Add all arcs to a set. Okay, so here is our set. So we have, have an arc between WA and NT, right? That represents one constraint. And remember, it says go for both directions. Okay, we'll, so we'll make sure that that gets included in our set. So WA between NT, WA and SA, right? That's an arc. Okay, now let's go up to NT. Well, there's an arc between NT and WA. Right? So you can see that we got both directions included in there. And then there's also um, an arc between NT and Q. And then there's an arc between NT and SA. Now remember, arcs represent a constraint. Okay, So the constraint between WA and NT is that they can't both have the same color. Similarly between WA and SA, they can't both have the same color. Okay, So NT and SA Let's see here. Let's go with um, Q. So Q and um, NT. That's an arc. That's a constraint. Q and SA. Okay. And Q and S and SW. Okay. Uh, now let's go with NSW. NSW and Q have to be different. That's a that's a constraint. NSW and SA, they have to be different, that's a constraint. NSW and uh, V, they have to be different, that's a constraint. And so then lastly, SA and WA have to be different, that's a constraint. SA and NT, that's a constraint. SA and Q, that's a constraint. Um, SA and NSW, that's a constraint. And then SA and V, that's a constraint. Okay, now there's no constraint between T and anybody else. So T could be whatever color we want, right? It doesn't, it doesn't matter, okay? So that's our set, okay? So let's follow our algorithm, right? So that's the first, the first step in the algorithm. So we've, we've got that, okay? So that is done. Okay, now while the set isn't empty, is the set empty? No, right? So what are we gonna do? We're gonna remove an arc. So we've got the X part and the Y part, OK? 
okay? So you can pick anyone you want, right? Um, it doesn't matter, okay? So we'll go ahead and we'll take the WA and the NT arc, okay? So remove that from the set. Now, what do we do? If we need to change the domain of X, okay, do we need to change the domain of X? Well, what does it mean to change the domain of X? What's it mean to revise the domain of X? Okay, well, let's go down. Um, let's go down here and take a look. Okay, check each value in X's domain. So what are the values of X's domain? Okay, let's uh, take a look here. Okay, domains. Okay, the domain of WA is RGB, right? The domain of NT is RGB. Okay, so we have to check each value, right, uh, in the domain of X. So WA, each value, R, G, and B, red, green, and blue, right? So um, is it possible, remember, WA and NT have to be different. So if we were to assign to R or to WA red, right? Is there a value in NT that's not the same? Well, yeah, we could assign to NT either green or blue, right? So that arc, so that constraint is satisfied, okay? So we don't have to do, um, we don't have to remove R from the WA domain. Now let's check G. If we were to assign to WA G, is there something in NT that we could assign that's satisfying the constraint? Yeah, I mean, we could do either red or we could do blue, okay? So now let's check the very last uh, value in WA's domain, which is blue. Is there some value in NT's domain that we could assign? Um, yeah, we could assign either red or green, right? So for this arc, right, that arc is arc consistent. We can assign values to both WA and NT, right, that satisfy the constraint. So we're, so we're good to go, okay? So we don't have to change the domain of X, right? So let's go back up to the while loop. And what do we do? We remove an arc. So what's the next arc? The next arc is WA uh, SA, okay? So remove that from the set. And we do the same thing, right? So what do we do? Is there some value in WA's domain, right? Check for every single one, so red, right? Is there some value in SA's domain that we could assign to SA so that WA does not equal uh, RA, right? So if we assign to WA red, can we pick something for SA that uh, works? Um, yeah, we could, right? Because uh, we could choose green, okay? And then you just go on, you know, for all the other values in the domain of WA, right? So if we chose green for WA, then we could choose red for SA. If we chose blue for WA, we could choose, um, you know, red or green, right? So that arc is consistent, okay? So no problem, okay? So you just keep on going, repeating that process. So NT and WA. Could we assign something to NT? Yeah. As it turns out, we can go through this entire thing, right? And it's not going to be a problem. We're never going to have a situation. You can go ahead and check me on this, and you can try it on your own. But we're never going to have a situation where um, we have to revise um, X, where we have to revise a domain. And so since that's the case, since every single arc can be removed and that we can find a pair of values to satisfy the constraint, then for this map coloring problem, it is arc consistent, okay? And since it's arc consistent, that means that there is a solution. And again, it's not going to tell you what the solution is, just that there is one, okay? So let's do another, um, let's do another example here. And uh, for this one, I'll just make something up. Right, so uh, let's say that we've got um, three variables, okay? So here's our variables, A, B, C, um, and D, okay? 
and then let's check the domain. Let's define a domain, okay? So the domain for A is gonna be um, the value 0, 1, and 2, okay? The domain for B will be 0 and 1, and the domain for C will be uh, 1 and 4, and the domain for um, D will be 0, uh, 3, and 4, okay? So I just made that up off the top of my head, so let's see what we got. Now, constraints, okay? We'll make a constraint that, um, we'll make a constraint that A, the value for A has to be uh, greater than B, okay? And we'll make another constraint that says that uh, the value for B, um, oops, the value for B has to be greater than um, half of uh, C, okay? And then we'll make the constraint that uh, C uh, can't equal D, okay? So let's draw a constraint satisfaction graph for that. And then let's see if there's a solution, right? So there's a solution to the problem if we can assign values to um, all the values or to all the variables A, B, C, and D such that none of these constraints are um, violated, okay? So there's a constraint between A and B, right? That is that A must be greater than B, okay? There's a constraint between B and C such that uh, B has to be greater than half of C, and then there's a constraint between C and D such that C cannot equal D. Right, so what we have is three arcs here, and I feel like I want to add another one just to make it a little bit more interesting. Maybe we'll say um, B has to be B has to be less than uh, or equal to the square of D. Maybe we'll do something like that. Okay, so those are our arcs, right? So we've got a constraint of A greater than B. Okay, and we have to um, go both ways, right? So we also have to check in the other direction, B less than A. Okay, then we have the constraint B greater than half of C, and we have to check both ways. Okay, and then we have C not equal to D, D not equal to C, B less than or equal to D squared, and then, oops, said B, B, and then D squared uh, greater than or equal to B, right? You have to do that because when you're going through and revising domains, you could mess up um, constraints that you already examined, right? So if I mess up um, or if I remove something from the domain of C for this fourth constraint down here, that might have messed up the constraint uh, earlier on or earlier in my checking process, right? So um, I have to go back and make sure that I don't uh, screw that up. So I got to go in both directions. Okay, so um, let's do it. Okay, so let's check A greater than B. Okay, we'll remove that arc. Okay, now A greater than B. So let's pick some value from the domain of A, we have to go through every single one of them, so we'll just start at zero here, okay? Now, is there some value in B that is less than A, right? If we assign zero to A, right, is, can we pick something in B where zero is greater than B, right? No, we can't. So what does that mean? That means that we are going to do a revision, right? So that means that we have to remove the zero from the domain of A. Okay, all right, now, we go back up, okay, we go back up. Since that's the case, okay, we check, we, we did need to do a, a revision. If the size of domain of X is zero, then we're done, right? But we're not, okay, it's not. So we're not done yet. Now that being said, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself and we have to check for every single value, right? So let's go back. We remove it to where we remove zero, and let's examine the one. Is there some value in um, B where one is greater than it? Yeah, the zero is, right? So we're not gonna also remove the one. Now let's check for two. 
is there some value in B where two is greater? Yes. So we only ended up removing that one zero there, okay? So now let's go back, okay? We needed to change the domain of X. Yes, that's true. So is the domain of X zero? Is the size of the domain of X zero? No, right? So we continue on. So for each neighbor of X, so who was the neighbor of X? Well, in this case, remember X was A in this case. So for each neighbor of A, who's the neighbor of A? Just B, right? So what do you do? You add the arc of the neighbor, right? Which is B and x to this to the set but it says except for y right so we already compared against b so we're not going to add that arc between a and b back in right if if we had another neighbor let's say g here right then we would add g and a into our set but we don't have that okay because we were just involved with a and b so we're not going to put b a back in we don't we don't need to in that case Okay, all right, so let's go back up to the top of the loop now and uh, remove an arc. So what's the next arc? The next arc is B less than A, okay? B less than A, okay? So let's examine that. So we have to go through every value of B, okay? And we have to see if, there, if the uh, constraint holds. So is there, for if we assign zero, to B. Is there a value in A that satisfies the B less than A constraint? Yes, one, right? Or two. Then let's go check and see if there is one uh, for the other value of one. Is there a value in A that satisfies the constraint? B minus A or one less than something in A? Yeah, right? We could choose the two. So that constraint is satisfied. No problem. We didn't have to make a revision. Let's grab the next thing. So the next constraint the next arc is B greater than half C, okay? So we're just going through and checking all the constraints and making revisions as required. So let's check everything in B, so check zero, okay? Is there something in C that we can assign that'll make this constraint hold up? So let's check the domain of C, right? So one and four. So if we have one, that's 0.5. Is zero greater than 0.5? Uh, no, right? What about for the C, four, right? Is zero greater than two? No, so that means that we're gonna have a revision and we have to remove zero from uh, the domain of B. Okay, now let's check out one for uh, B. Okay, is there some value in the domain of C that'll make this constraint be satisfied, right? Well, if we pick one, if you half one, that's 0.5, right? 0.5, is less than one, right? So in that case, right, one's greater than 0.5. Assigning one to uh, B, okay, and uh, one to C will satisfy the constraint, okay? So that constraint satisfied, we can move on, but we did have to make a revision. So let's go back up to our algorithm here and take a look for each neighbor of X except Y Okay, so who was X in this case? B, who was Y, C. So every neighbor of B, except for C, okay, we're gonna add that arc. So between D and B, we have to add that back to the set, okay? So what was the constraint between D and B? Okay, B less than or equal to D squared, okay? So, So we'll add that in, b less than or equal to d squared, okay? And as a matter of fact, the way it's written in the algorithm, it's neighbor in x, right? So d squared has to be uh, greater than or equal to b. Now it's already in here, okay? So since it's already in there, we don't need to repeat ourselves. We can, we can just go ahead and go with the one that's already there. Okay, so let's continue on. Let's grab, let's grab the constraint half C less than B. Okay, half C less than B. All right, so let's take a look. So is there some value we can assign to C that will satisfy this constraint um, and some value we can assign to B? 
Okay, so we have to check everything in C. So if we assign 1 to C, that would be 0.5. Now, is there something in B that's, that is greater than 0.5? Yes. Okay, so 1's okay, so we can leave that in there. Now, if we assign 4 to C, right, that would make this term evaluate the 2. Now, is there something in B that will make that work, satisfy that constraint? Um, no, right, because um, the only thing left in B is 1. Is 1 greater than 2? No. So we have to pull out the 4. Right, so that means that we have a revision that had to happen. So what does that mean? That means that we have to go back up here and add the arc, right? So we have to add B greater than, right? Greater than A, okay? Back into our set. Okay, remember, it's going to be the neighbors of, um, of a C that aren't involved. Okay, that aren't involved. So, excuse me, it's actually going to be D not equal to C. We have that back in. Okay, but notice that we already have that in there. So, we don't have to add it again. Okay. So the only neighbors of C were B and D, and we were just checking against B, so we don't have to put the CB arc back in or the BC arc in. We do need DC, but since we already have it in there, that's why I did both directions early on, we don't have to add it in. Okay. So let's continue on. Um, we're going to check C not equal to D. Okay. C not equal to D. All right, now let's go and check the domain of C. Okay, so there is one. Is there some value in the domain of D that's not one? Yes, three, right? So that constraint is satisfied. So no revisions have to be made. So now let's go look at D not equal to C. Okay, now check every value in D to see if there's something in C that's not equal to the value in D. So. For zero, okay, is there something in C that makes this constraint hold up? Yeah, the one, okay. And what about three? Yep, the one. Now what about four? Yep, the one. So that constraint is satisfied, no problem, okay. Now let's go ahead and pull the constraint B less than or equal to D squared. So if we assign to B one, is there something in D that makes this hold up? Well, zero squared doesn't work, but you only need to find one, right? Now what about three? Three squared does work. Okay, so B less than or equal to D squared, that holds up. Okay, now what about the other direction? Well, the other direction is just the other direction, right? So um, is there something in D, right? Let's take a look at D, zero. Okay. D squared greater than or equal to B. Okay, let's check all the values. So if we assign to D zero, that would be zero squared zero. Is there something in B that satisfies that? Yep, the one, right? So that's, zero, so I take that back, right? Zero squared, is that greater than or equal to what's in, than, than what's in B at that point? Nope. So that constraint would not be satisfied right so we got to remove the zero from d's domain see why we have to go in both directions now what if we assign uh three to d well then that would be nine which is greater than or equal to b fine so we don't have to remove three from d's domain now what about four well four squared is 16 and that's greater than or equal to you know b if we assign one to b so we don't have to um four squared is 16. So we don't have to remove the, the four um, from D's domain, okay? Now, what are the neighbors of D um, other than B, right? Because remember, we were working with B in that case. So the neighbor is just C. So we got to put C back in there, right? So we got to say D not equal to C, right? So, um, oops. C not equal to D, 
right? Why did I do that? Because look, neighbor and then x. In this case, x was d, right? So c not equal to d. So we got to double check that going back the other direction. So we don't want to mess up any values that could be assigned to c, right? So we got to check we got to check c not equal to d. So let's go back and double check that c didn't get screwed up. Okay, so go check c one. Okay, if we assign to c one, is there some value in d's domain that we could assign to have that constraint hold up? Yeah, I mean you could pick either three or four. So that constraint is not violated. Now, the last thing we have up here is b greater than a. So let's pull that off. B greater than a. If we assign 1 to B, is there something in A that will satisfy that constraint? Yeah, the 2. Okay. So now that that's satisfied, we go back to our set. It's empty, right? So um, while the set isn't empty, well, it is empty. So this loop is done. So we go down to here and say, well, if we get through the loop, the CSP is R consistent and there is a solution. So this constraint satisfaction problem that I defined right here, it is consistent. That means that every single um, constraint can be satisfied by assigning some value to A, B, C, and D, right? So AC3 doesn't tell you what that solution is, just that there is in fact a solution, okay? So I hope you found that video helpful. Hopefully I didn't lose you uh, anywhere during that um, presentation. I was going through the algorithm. I'm trying to get it in one shot, you know, one take uh, to get through it as quickly as possible. Um, so if you were confused about anything, you're a student of mine, shoot me an email. Um, but, you know, just rewind and go back and see if you can follow along um, as well. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.